welcome back to my channel. My name is Betsy, and today I want to talk about crotons. Crotons are awesome. I love crotons, and I feel like they don't have a cool enough reputation in the houseplant world. Like, sure, they're not a super rare plant, and they're not hard to come by, but look how amazing they are. They come in all sorts of shapes and colors and sizes. I think that they're absolutely fantastic. And every time I post a picture of, of one of my crotons on Instagram, for example, there are always comments from people who are like, oh, I had a croton, but it died. I know, crotons are so complicated. But they're not. I, I have never had any problems ever taking care of croton, even though I didn't know anything about them before I got them. And I feel like maybe people just need to know a little bit more about what they require. So I'm gonna make a video about what they require. Here we go. I currently have two different types of croton. I actually got this one when I made um, my video of the plant tour of a garden center in Paris. If you're interested in seeing that video, you can click, click that link up there. I really just love this plant. I've had my eye on it for a while because the leaves, I think, are really fascinating. They twist and they're crinkly and they just have an array of colors from red to deep green to yellow. I think it's a really fun plant. I just, I can't look at this plant and not feel a little bit more cheerful than I did a moment ago. The other one that I have is a Croton Mrs. Eiston. You can see it needs watered. Uh, it's a little droopy right now. Usually it's a little more perky. And I got this at the grocery store downstairs. It was like one euro and I thought, okay. It only had two leaves at the time and that was Oh, I think it was probably in June. So you can see just how quickly they grow from June until now, November. It's grown many, many leaves and it's just a beautiful plant. In terms of lighting, crotons really need bright, really bright indirect light. If you give them too much light and they get direct sun, like if you leave them in a west or south facing window and they get a few hours of direct hot sun every day, the leaves can get really dull looking. They won't, very, they won't be very pretty and uh, it can burn the leaves as well if, you, if they get too much direct sun. If you give them too low light, then the leaves will turn green, and then you won't have the super interesting, colorful, exciting plant. So you have to really find the perfect medium of really bright, indirect light. For sun exposure, I mean, you can basically keep them anywhere except for a north-facing window. I think a north-facing north window will not provide enough light and the leaves will turn kind of more green and they won't exhibit all of their really flashy, pretty colors. They'll do fine, they'll do great actually, in a south or west facing room as long as they don't get left in hot, direct sun during the afternoon hours, otherwise the leaves will get dull and maybe burn. So don't do that. I need to, I need to switch. I need to switch. Switch my crotons. Uh, they prefer temperatures between like 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be like 15 to 27 degrees Celsius. In my apartment, they did really well all summer long in temperatures between like 25 and sometimes up to 34 degrees Celsius. They were thriving in that as long as I kept them well watered. They don't want it to be too cold, so in the wintertime, be sure that you take care of them. Don't leave them near really cold windows or places where there are cold drafts, or they could experience leaf drop or something like that. Humidity. They do prefer things a little more on the humid side. I mean, they would never thrive in an environment that's really dry where succulents and cacti thrive, but they're not as desperate for humidity as like calatheas or prayer plants or alocasia, for example. So anywhere between like 40% and 50%, like I think regular household humidity should be okay, but they will do better in a little bit higher humidity. Like my apartment is generally around 50% to 55% humidity, and they seem to love that. They do really well. I haven't had any dry leaf tips or anything like that. So I would suggest, you know, keeping it near a humidifier, but it's not going to make or break the plant, right? You don't want to overwater or underwater your croton. As with most house plants, you need to check it regularly. And the way that I do that is I stick my finger in the soil, and when the top quarter of the pot feels dry, I'll give it a water. And you can tell, I mean, they'll let you know. My, my um, Croton Mrs. Eiston, for example, looks really droopy right now. It's usually much perkier, and it's because it needs water. And you can let it go a day like this or so. I mean, you can go just by the way that they look visually. I wouldn't let it go a week like this because it will suffer from the dehydration, but uh, you know, just keep your eye on it when it starts looking a little droopy. 
give it a water. For potting soil, they do prefer something a little on the rich side, but always quick draining and well aerated. As with most house plants, they need something that isn't going to hold on to water for you know days on end and soaks up water like a sponge or become really like compact and like a clay. You want to avoid that completely. But for me, as usual, I just use 50% houseplant potting mix and 50% perlite, and they seem to do just fine in that. I have I've had no problems at all. You should know that it is toxic if ingested. So if you have a cat or a dog or a child who might be a little curious, take a little nibble, uh, it could cause some unpleasant symptoms. So if you have any creature in your home that might ingest this plant, keep it out of reach. Or if you have a cat or something that's like a well-known plant seeker and eater, just don't have a croton. It's not dangerous to have around, it's just dangerous if it's ingested and it could cause some unpleasant symptoms. And also, if you're handling it a lot, like for example, you can pinch this plant to encourage growth on the, the lower parts and create a bushier plant rather than a tall, leggy plant. So, and pinching is a, a real term, and it just means, you know, when you have new growth coming out here, you would just pinch it off and then that would encourage the plant to put out branches down lower and create a bushier effect. If you're doing things like that, you want to wear gloves or just something to protect your skin because it is a skin irritant, like it releases a sap that will cause a skin rash. And you don't want to get that on your hands, and that's all. It won't poison you or anything, it just might cause, you know, an itchy or, or burning rash. I think that covers everything when it comes to croton. They like really bright indirect light. It helps them maintain their vivid, gorgeous color. They like temperature in the same range that we like temperature, so they do really well in our homes because they prefer it to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius, same as us. They prefer things a little on the humid side, but they're not desperate, like calipheas are their prayer plants. So if things are around 40% humidity, they should still do okay. You just don't want to keep them in the same environment as succulents or cactus. They like a rich, well-draining, aerated soil and they're toxic if ingested, so don't eat your crotons. Don't eat your crotons. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was interesting and helpful. I hope that you're motivated to go out and buy all the croton plants ever. Or if you are struggling with your croton plant, I hope that it, it helps you figure out what it needs and, and take better care of it. If you have any comments or questions, or if you have suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I will totally get back to you. I love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I try to put out at least one plant video every week. So if that's your thing, if you're really interested in that, you can subscribe and, and I'll definitely, I'll make plenty of plant videos for you. And if you have Instagram, you can find me on there, at Betsy Begonia. I post plenty of plant pictures on there all the time. I, I'm very active on Instagram, so feel free to follow me on Instagram as well if you wanna see more plant pics. So thank you again. For watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.